could go. But can we have an informal? I'll, I'll ask later personally si East Avenue Medical Center Administrator, if whoever is the uh, doctor in charge. Ma'am, kayo? East Avenue? East Avenue uh, Medical Center representative here? None? So far, wala? Wala? They're not, they're not invited to be here? Ah, ganun ba yun? Okay. We have Yusek uh, Gerardo Bayugo over there. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll talk to you later. Uh -huh. He's uh -huh. the uh, supervising undersecretary. Kwentuhan lang tayo. W ano yung magiging effect nung tong swine flu? If ever... Uh, itong sa, sa mga pork ngayon na... Kasi the, the U.S. government issued a statement yesterday na hindi raw natin nakokontrol yung yung sakit ng baboy. So, what would be the effect sa, aside from psychological implications, ano ba mangyayari pag kumain ka ng ganong pork? Uh, yes, wala akong mangyayari, Senator, uh, dahil, but the, wala akong ebidensya na nagpapakita na ang, uh, ang uh, Africa, African swine flu virus can cause disease in humans, no? Pero ang magiging problema dyan, pwede maging carrier yung uh, tao. Carrier of? So, of the virus, so pwede yeah. i- kundi sa mga hayop, ibalik sa <laughs> hayop, kasi may chain. So far as human beings are wala. concerned? Wala ho. Wala ho. So what are we afraid of? Uh, yung, uh, it's really essentially limited to the food security. And why do they call that a flu? Lalagnatin ka, gano'n? Hindi, sakwal lang yun, sa mga baboy. Sa baboy. May lagnat sa baboy. Pero, pero in so far as human consumption... Wala ho eh. Wala, wala ko sa editor. Wala ho uh, ebidensya na nagpapakita. So perhaps na, you can issue a statement na ano, kasi uh, yung Antipolo, yung Rizal, yung nag-aaway na sa Marikina. So, so sumali pa ngayon yung ilang, ilang international uh, agencies. So walang effect. Pero hindi rin pwedeng kainin because... Hindi rin pwedeng uh, kainin kung namatay na uh, swine uh, fever yung baboy because, syempre, namatay na yan. Marami rin pwedeng mga mikrobyo na pwedeng makuha naman ng tao. An example would be uh, salmonella, typhoid fever. So, hindi lang po ito usapin na uh, ASF, kundi pwede magkaroon pa rin ng sakit sa, uh, dahil sa mga ibang mikrobyo, lalo-lalo na po kung ito hindi naman naluto o na proseso ng tama. So, number one ho dyan, kailangan iluto ng tama. Walang dugo, walang uh, hilaw, o mapulang bahag. Mahilig pa naman tayo sa dinuguan. <laughs> Ay, diba, so, at least luto naman yan. Worry, pag, pag yung, yung baboy uh, affected ng swine flu fever, fit for human consumption. Hindi pa rin. Hindi pa rin. Ang policy is hindi pa rin. Because there will be other microbes that will latch on to that dead uh, meat because of African, uh, African swine flu. And then humans can carry, can be carriers. Yun ang uh, pagkakaintindi ko. You still remember the, uh -huh. the foul epidemic we had a few years ago sa San Luis, Pampanga? So pinatay lahat yung mga, mga itik, di ba? Yung, pati sa mga poultry sa Pampanga. Uh, sinunog lahat yun. Bird, but, flu. bird flu. So that's, again, that's a flu. That's a flu. Uh, affecting the fowl. Pero fit for human consumption. Di ba kinain ni Secretary Pinyol? In, in, hindi po. Kasi, ah? Senator, yung, ang pwede lang pong kainin ng tao ay healthy animals na slaughtered na walang sakit. Kasi po, kapag may sakit siya, tas namatay siya, yun pong laman loob niya, pwede pong puntahan ng mga mikrobyo. So, so an unhealthy animal cannot be eaten is not fit for human consumption. Pero hindi naman po tayo magkakasakit nung African swine fever kung, magkasakit, kung makain natin siya. Ang kinatatakot po natin yung ibang unhygienic na sakit na maaring makuha from eating an unhealthy animal. So how would you determine now as a preventive measure kung may swine flu yung, yung baboy, eh yung palang yung palang uh, gadget ay sa uh, United Kingdom pa. Doon pa pinapacheck kung talagang may, may swine flu kung positive. How, how would you ano? Col confirmatory Ay. test po yung sa England, pero ang National Meat Inspection Service, meron po siyang mga kalakip na yung certification process. 
uh, do, bago kasi huya katayin sa uh, slaughterhouse or abatoa, yung pong may certificate ng uh, uh, veterinary doctor na sabi niya, this particular uh, pig is healthy, pwedeng katayin, pwedeng kainin. Pero marami tayo, mga backyard piggeries lang. Uh, well, <laughs> Di ba? problema ho yun. Siguro ang DA ho ag, uh, dapat ho uh, tumugon kasi yung biosecurity sa backyard. Uh, so there are no veterinarians uh, attached to the Department of Health? It's Wala. DA po. It's DA uh, sa okay. Oh. okay. Mahirap pala to. Mahirap pala to. Kasi going to the Christmas season, siyempre mga hamon. Di ba? Lechon. So, ang, ang advice niyo, wag na kumain ng gano'n? Wag na kumain ng gano'n? Uh, kung galing sa ibang bansa, ay uh, dapat batay sa directive ng uh, DA, hindi, hindi dapat na yan kakainin. Like for instance, yung FMD before, Foot and mouth disease. Yes, no? yung FMD before, there was a global uh, alert to avoid. Di ba? Yung mga ganon. Pero ito wala, di ba? Meron na? Yun pong, uh, upon the request po, for example, of the Department of Agriculture, ang FDA po, pinagbawal na natin ang pag-import at pagbenta ng pork products coming from Asian, so African swine fever affected countries. Such Sa tulad as? po ng China, Vietnam, Korea. Cambodia. Pag po merong ASF ang isang bansa, bawal na pong ipasok dito sa atin. Ang DA po, binabantayan nila yung hilaw na karne. Kami naman po sa FDA, basta processed food, binabantayan po natin, bawal na pong pumasok dito sa atin para nga po hindi na magkalat yung virus. Hindi, pero tayo atin. meron na, di ba? Kaya nga po tayo siguro, mababawal din tayong mag-export to other countries. No, Baka ang, may mga ang, countries ang po, hindi tayo US, tatanggapin. Ang sinasabi ng US ngayon, it took us months to admit that we were infected months ago, since summer. Tama po ba yan? Uh, yun po ang akin na uh, pagkakaalam uh, sa Anotoar. So, uh, pero hindi ko alam yung detalye nito So, who uh, is report. at fault at Department of Agriculture? It looks like uh, that uh, will be best uh, addressed by DA, uh, sa Anotoar. Uh -huh. Kasi yun daw, yun daw mga imported na mga langunisa, mga hamham, ganon, uh, infected pala yun. Hindi naman po, unless makonfirm po nila, no? Kasi kung... Kasi ang sinasabi ng US ngayon, yun daw mga Chinese tourists na nakalagay sa mga suitcases yung mga, yung mga pork products, yun daw ang pinanggagalingan. Ito yung processed. Uh, dalawa po kasi yung ano, pwedeng panggalingan. Yun din po kasi yung mga hilaw na karne na marami rin pong nakakuli. Halimbawa sa tondo ng mga... Hilaw po na karne from, ano, no, from pork galing China na naismuggle sa Pilipinas. Mas high risk po kasi yung hilaw na karne kesa sa processed na food. Okay. Yung processed food po, low, low, lower risk po yon Pero binawal na rin po natin. Ang higher risk po talaga is frozen meat na unprocessed. Ang gulo, ano? Wala pa si Senator Go. clarify nito sa publiko kasi ang lumalabas ayaw na kumain ng baboy yung iba kasi akala nila magiging carrier din sila so wala pa lang ganon ang pwede po ka siyang ma matransmit kung yung food handler po yung nagluto halimbawa naghawak ng karne pagkatapos kung may virus po yun tas nakakahawak siya ng ibang baboy matatransmit po sa baboy. Pero sa tao po, walang human. Eh, bola, wala pa tayo. Wala, na ba? wala pa po. Ha? Wala pa sa extent. Yan yung tumalo sa atin sa basketball, Congo, <laughs> sa kanila pala, bola. Ngayon, nagkwentuhan lang kami, sir. Hindi, tungkol sa swine fever. Kung... Ganun ba? Okay. Hindi daw, hindi daw carrier. Pwede rock, pwedeng kainin, hindi ba? Coat you, to coat you, you say. Pag hindi, basta healthy animal po na slaughtered, pwede pong kainin ng tao. Hindi, kung may swine flu yung baboy. Uh, pag may swine flu po yung baboy, hindi na natin, hindi pa rin po natin nakakainin. Kasi pwede nga po natin during the handling, pwede pa tayong magkalat may, may ng baboy. May lagnat ba talaga yung baboy? 
may par, meron po talaga lagnat sa mga pantal-pantal pero hindi po nakakahawa sa tao. This is uh, good afternoon. This is courtesy of uh, Senator uh, Tolentino pa, from Cavite ito, no? <laughs> Pinagawa po ito ni Senator Tolentino. Pagawaan mo rin si Ma'am Nancy. Uh, we resume the budget hearing of the Department of Health and its uh, attached agencies and corporations. would like to welcome again Secretary Duque and the rest of the DOH. Let me also acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Tol Tolentino. All right, we will just uh, take off from our discussions uh, yesterday. I believe some senators still have pending questions for the DOH. Uh, senators Hontiveros, Revilla, and De La Rosa were here yesterday, but I think they are not yet done with their uh, questions. Uh, since uh, they are not yet here, uh, we will allow questions from my uh, fellow senators uh, by order of their arrival. Let's start with uh, the early bird, Sir, uh, Senator Tolentino. Do you have any questions you, with the uh, DOH? Thank you, sir. Just for the record, kindly restate my preliminary questions, friendly questions a while ago concerning the uh, African swine flu and how will that affect uh, sans the psychological implications uh, our pork eating uh, community especially mga litsyon uh, lahat yun uh, siguro for the record para ma marinig din ng mga kababayan natin yung katotohanan dito uh, tatlong bagay po eh una sisiguraduhin po ng mga kababayan natin na tama ang uh, pagluto pagproseso ng uh, karning baboy na simula at simula pa lamang meron na hong uh, certification from the National Meat Inspection Service na ito pong uh, karning ito nang galing sa malusog, walang sakit na uh, baboy na meron din pong uh, certification ang mga veterinary doctors na sila po ang uh, inaatasan sa ilalim ng batas uh, ng uh, Bureau of Animal Industry at saka sa NMIS, na malusog ho itong mga uh, baboy na ito bago po sila kinakatay. At uh, uh, sinisertipikahan ng uh, NMIS bago po ito ay uh, dalin sa mga merkado o sa palengke. So, ang uh, kinakailangan ho rito ang uh, paalala sa ating po mga kababayan na basta luto, huwag hayaan may hilaw, may dugo uh, sa karning baboy na kinakain Iluto ng tama, bilhin sa mga pinagkakatiwalaan na mga uh, manininda at siguraduhin meron pong certification. Secretary, yung tanong ko kanina, pag ang isang tao nakakain ng baboy na infected ng African swine flu, ano ang mangyayari doon sa taong yun? Uh, wala hong mangyayari sa kanya kung ang usapin po natin ay yung swine flu virus itself. Uh, pero ang uh, patay na baboy, pa alam niyo yung botcha, yung double dead na sinasabi, yan ay pwedeng uh, magdulot ng uh, sakit sa katawan ng tao dahil meron tayong salmonella, typhoid fever, cholera, uh, pwede rin hepatitis A, uh, at mga iba pa pong mga mikrobyo na kilala at natukoy na na nagdudulot ng sakit po sa tao. So yun po ang uh, dapat maintindihan po ng ating mga kababayan. So, walang dapat ikatakot sila kung sakaling uh, maka, ma, makain nila so yun, yun, yun ang kinakatakot ng publiko ngayon eh uh, eh walang uh, ma, baka walang bibili ng mga baboy yun ang mga reklamo ng mga hog racers natin ngayon uh, wala po basta sundin lang po yung mga sinabi natin kanina na kailangan siguraduhin 
uh, saan uh, galing yung uh, karning baboy na meron kailangan maging mas mapanuri po ang mga mamimili at sasabihin po nila o oh, itong baboy na ito meron bang uh, meat inspection certificate ito ng uh, NMIS uh, so kailangan po ang uh, mga kababayan ay uh, mataas sa kanilang kamalayan ang uh, maging mapanuri Mr. Chair? Okay, go ahead, Senator. Uh, with the permission of uh, Senator, Senator Francis. Hindi, siguro isang panawagan lang ko sa FDA dahil alam naman ho natin, burn na, magpapas ka na, uso na naman ng hamon. Uh, kung pwede, mas igtingan nyo pa siguro yung uh, pag-approve uh, nyo na itong mga ganitong produkto. Because I think yun, isa yun din sa uh, kailangan ng approval ng FDA, di ba? Yes, Madam Senator. Yun po mga processed food kasi sa FDA. So, paikot po yung mga inspectors natin to make sure na NMIS uh, cleared yung mga baboy na ginagamit. Lalo na po yung pag-prepare nila ng hamon na guumpisa na po kasi. Go ahead. It's a, a, a different topic, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Last week, we had a hearing concerning the proposed tax implications for, for vape. I, it's a different committee. I showed a, I showed a video uh, presentation coming from the president of Philip Morris International himself. I, I, I forgot the name, a Greek. They promised to phase out uh, Philip Morris within the next five years. I'm very interested in this. So apparently th there is going to be a gap that would be filled up by the vape, you know, jewel, et cetera, et cetera, mango flavored, et cetera. The following day, uh, that was a weekend, President Trump himself uh, announced the banning of vape cigarettes. So my, my question is this, policy, question, policy directions, if it is going to be banned, wala na talaga yon. Pag walang source sa Amerika, kasi ngayon ang, ang pinag-uusapan dun sa isang committee, Mr. Chair, ay nabibili daw online. Tatanungin ko yung stand ng, ng Department of Health dito. Tatanungin ko rin kung ito po ay nakakadulot ba ng tuberculosis. Although I'm not very familiar with the health implications, kasi maraming kabataan ngayon, vape, vape. The reason why I'm asking this, no offense to the DOH family, is that my, my records here would show and it is very notable that there was a zero disbursement rate over the allotment rate for the TB control program for 2018. Uh, with due respect, ang sabi, ang sabi dito sa notes na binigay sa akin, uh, third highest prevalence rate daw tayo after South Africa and Lesotho. Ang, ang, ang mga reports noon dati, na-cure na itong tuberculosis sa Pilipinas. So ang tanong ko, babalikan ko ulit yun. Uh, pag napunta po tayo doon sa vape, will it cause, uh, aside from the combustion, minsan pumuputok yung labi, will it cause any disease related to respiratory pulmonary ailments that uh, have been suffered by those yung mga nag -yoyosi? And then number two, can we, can we get, can this committee get an answer why, why there was a zero disbursement rate uh, relative to the tobacco control program which is 913 million kasi kung papasok na sa yung mga kabataan nag, nagpapalit ng smoking uh, habit eh, baka lalo lumala ito yun lang no? but I, I'm, I'm saying this for uh, policy directions and uh, uh, to, to verify from the DOH family bakit, bakit nag zero disbursement rate tayo no? Uh, no offense, kaibigan ko to si Secretary Duque, kasama ko to sa gabinete, trabaho lang, kailangan natin tanongin to. Any, can anybody answer this? Uh, if I may be allowed, uh, Mr. Chairman, yung pong uh, unang bahagi ng katanungan, uh, wala pong ebidensya na nagpapakita na direktamente magdudulot ng tuberculosis ang paggamit po ng uh, vape, uh, number one. You're not endorsing that. Oh, we're not. De definitely, not we're not endorsing. That, uh -huh. In fact, I should like to commend you, Mr. Senator, for your uh, manifest concern for the health of uh, our people and especially the youth when you said that uh, nababahala kayo na baka ito ay uh, magdulot ng sakit sa ating pong, uh, mga kabataan na nag-umpisa na sa mga uh, vaping at 
Yung vaping, walang idudulot na sakit? Ganun Hindi, yun lang po sa TB. Pero maraming ibang sakit. Kung makikita nyo po ang mga thread uh, ng uh, uh, CDC ng Amerika, ano po, uh, ang Missouri, ang uh, Illinois, California, uh, Wisconsin, at meron pa pang mga labing-anim na huyata sa ngayon eh, ng mga estado sa Amerika, na baka ho ito ang nagtulak uh, kay Presidente Trump na iba nito. Kasi nga, uh, lumalaga na po yung tinatawag na lung injury uh, na nakikita po sa mga pasyente na dumarami doon sa mga ospital nila na ngayon po kasalukuyan iniimbestigahan ng Center for Disease Control at kanilang uh, mga uh, specialist sa baga at bakit nagkakaganon ano at uh, maraming suspecha na pwedeng yung uh, yung uh, vape mismo o baka yung mga backyard yung mga concoction na gawa-gawa lang o baka mga fake na mga cartridges na galing uh, ibang bansa na so ito po ay sa kasalukuyan pinag-aaralan pa rin why I mentioned that Mr. Secretary is that uh, while while most of the vapes are imported uh, very surprising na nagkaroon ng vape na mango flavored So kung mango flavored, hindi naman galing siguro sa, sa atin galing yan. Uh, yung mangga. Oh. Flavoring lang po yun. Meron honey, may strawberry pa yata, may mint. So you're, uh -huh. you're acknowledging that lung disease can be a consequence, not necessarily uh, tuberculosis. Now, going to my second question, yung low disbursement rate sa TB control. Uh, may we request, uh, with your permission, the uh, USEC uh, kabutahe? Not Opa. low, zero disbursement rate. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Uh, for, t for TB, we have a uh, disbursement rate, but for the uh, tobacco control program, For TB, we have 94% uh, obligation, sir, as of uh, to date. It's the disbursement that is low because uh, we have not yet, uh, the procured medicines have not yet arrived, so we have not yet disbursed. We have not yet paid the, the amount for the commodities. Ma'am, Ma yung, yung uh, no, no, again, uh, with due respect, yung COA report kasi, ang sinabi nila, wala kayong ginastos at nag-expire yung tuberculin, uh, yung tuberculin purified protein derivatives. So, zero nga talaga. Y yun lang po yung tanong ko. Uh, Mr. Chairman, ang pagkakaintindi ko po na ipamahagi eventually itong mga PPD. Uh, ito po yung mga uh, commodities uh, na distribute po ito kasi yun naman expiry nito hanggang kundi ako nagkakamali hanggang December 31, 2019. So, which means current po. So, yun naman po ay na-disburse. At pwede po naman kami magbigay ng listahan kung ano-ano po yung mga gamot na uh, kasama po doon sa 2018 uh, COA Consolidated Annual Audit Report at uh, kung ano-ano naman po doon ang atin pong na ipamahagi na mula Enero 2019 hanggang August uh, 2019. Meron lang po isang natira, kung di po ako nagkakamali, ito po yung micronutrient powder na ito naman ay uh, kasalukuyan din po na atin ibinababa sa mga uh, nangangailangan katulad ng DSWD. So, handa po kami magbigay ng uh, listahan uh, ginoong senador. Furnish, Mr. Chair, just furnish this uh, committee a copy Mr. of Mr. Chair, if I remember it correctly, we already requested the list yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Uh, uh, Umingi kami ng copy of na uh, Mr. Chair, did they submit the list already? Not yet. Committee Chair, na bigay. Uh, wala pa po. So, Mr. Chair, when can we have that uh, list? so that we can reconcile it with our records. Baka wala na tayong hearing tomorrow. Anyway, kindly submit it before 5 p.m. Secretary Duque, going back to yung vape, yung concern po ni Presidente dito, uh, sino bang nagre-regulate sa ngayon 
At uh, wala bang, di ba pag nagsisigarilyo ka ng vape, pag buga mo, wala bang epekto yung second uh, hand smoke sa katabi mo? Yun ang pinaka-concern niya eh. At sinabi niya sa amin na kung the same yung epekto ng uh, buga ng second hand smoke sa katabi mo, then he will consider it the same sa mga uh, existing uh, cigarettes kung ganun po ba. So, we have to prove or uh, walang, walang ganun same uh, effect. Yun po ang uh, gusto mangyari ni, ni Presidente. Sino po ang nag-regulate uh, nito kayo? Go ahead, uh, Isaac. Yeah, Mr. Chair, starting po ngayong buwan, actually by September 27, ang FDA will start regulating itong ating mga vape. Pinaparehistro na po na, yeah. Pinaparehistro na rin natin sila para nung kanilang mga produkto uh, at kasama nga po yun sa inihingi natin na magtataas din ng buwis katulad ng sigarilyo. Yun pong mga pag-aaral natin kasama ng mga experts na pinapakita po talaga na yung second hand smoke po, second hand ng vape, ay katulad din po ng sigarilyo. No? Meron din po siyang nicotine na nakaka-addict at may mga chemical din po siya na harmful na pwedeng mag-cause ng stroke, sakit sa puso. At sa Amerika po ngayon, pito na ang recently na namatay na paggamit ng vape. Kaya pinapareport na po natin lahat ng vape-reported illness, related illnesses sa Pilipinas. At yun nga po talagang hihingin po sana namin ng Department of Health na kung katulad po nung ating executive order ni Pangulong Duterte na nagbabawal ng paninigarilyo sa bahat ng mga public places, ang gusto po natin ay eh, pati po sana sa ang vape, ganun din po. Kung saan bawal manigarilyo, bawal din po mag-vape. Kasi yung karapatan po ng tao na huminga ng malinis na hangin, dapat po hindi naman nayuyurakan ng mga tao na nagbe-vape. Kailan po namin malalaman yung resulta ng uh, inyo? Can we request for a report po? Yes, Mr. Chair. Meron po tayong kompleto niyang ginagamit po namin doon sa mga syntax hearing natin. And we will send your office and the committee a complete report. Thank you, uh, Yusek uh, Domingo. Going back to... Uh, it, Mr. Chair, uh, pwede vape-related lang. Kasama ko din sa irregulate na yung nagbebenta nung... Naman tawag doon sa liquid na yun? Yung, hindi, pods yung sa jewel, di ba? But kasi di ba merong mga tindahan na nagtitimpla tapos pwede kang mamili ng flavor. Yes, Kasama ho ba yun sa i-regulate ng FDA? Yun? Yes, Madam Sarto. So ang gusto po natin, unang-una yung content niya, yung nicotine content niya ay ililimit natin. Hindi pwedeng lumagpas doon sa 20 mg per ml para hindi po sobrang highly concentrated kasi poisonous po. Pangalawa, actually, ang gusto po natin ilimit, pati yung flavor. Yun po mga flavor na nakaka, uh, nakakaingganyo sa mga bata, katulad po ng bubblegum, candy, mga ganyan, ayaw po natin. Gusto natin mga simpleng flavor lang, katulad ng flavor lamang ng sigarilyo na available para hindi po yung mga bata ma-entice na magamit ito. And would you have enough personnel? Yes, ma'am. Our lab is now preparing for the for the registration, and we're actually re ready to receive. Hindi kailangan ng ano? Binibigyan nakita ng segway para humingi <laughs> ng additional. <laughs> <laughs> Nagahar po talaga kami ng mas marami kasama naman po yun do sa inihingi namin sa budget yung ating. Kisalo ko, Mr. Board. Chair. Uh, Mayroon pa daming trabaho yung FDA and um, di ba may lumabas din na report? sa Arta ata, kayo yung uh, winner dun sa maraming complaint kasi hindi nila napaprocess ka agad as part of the ease of doing business. Eh, baka may kakulangan pagdating din sa personnel ng FDA and I think si Chair would be more than willing to help uh, FDA kung kailangan ng additional funding para magawa niyo naman yung mandate nyo. Kasi, uh, Aaminin ko lang, marami po talaga nagsusumbong na medyo natatanggalan sila dun sa pagkuha ng permit sa FDA. Um, so, baka kulang na kayo sa tao. Totoo po yun, Madam Senator. In fact, since June, naka-hire na kami ng 90 na extra po na regulators at evaluators. Pero marami pa po kaming kakailanganin. Kaya kasama po talaga siya sa hinihingi namin na budget yung naka-request po namin na ngayon sa NEP. So, so siguro ngayon lang, for example, magpapaprove ako ng isang product. Gano'ng katagal ito bago Pag, Kapag bago po siya, depende po kung pagkain or gamot. No? Yung pagkain po, mas madali, mas mabilis. Kaya po natin ilabas yan if it's a new registration within two months. At kung pong bago, uh, within one month, kung renewal na lang po. At yung mga automatic renewal ngayon, pinapalabas na natin within one week. 
yun po after nung arta nga po ay pumunta dun sa amin at inin-orient ang ating mga trabahador doon. So lahat lang po ng automatic renewals natin will be released by end of the week. Pag sa gamot po, mas matagal po kasi mas masusi ang pag-aaral. No? And I think wag din naman natin isasakripisyo yung safety, yung safety. For, for speed because at the end of the day, mas importante yon kesa dun sa pag-comply nyo dun sa... Uh, ease of doing business, di ba? Kung yeah. mapapahamak naman tayo para lang uh, mapaganda yung uh, kumbaga turn around nyo dun sa mga humihingi ng permit. Ayaw din naman natin yun. Yes, ma'am. At yun naman po with the ease of doing business, uh, FDA is committed na by end of the year tapos na po kasi yung ating leeway sa ARTA. Uh, dapat po matapos na namin yung aming mga backlog na sa ngayon ay umaabot pa po ng halos 10,000 para po up to date na by next year eh tuloy-tuloy na po na regular Uh, ARTA timelines na po yung ating mga registration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusek Domingo. Iyon po, tama yung sinabi niya. Marami po mga uh, reklamo na medyo matatagalan po sa D FDA. Uh, malaki ng po ang tiwala ko sa inyo, Yusek Domingo, na mapabilis ito. At uh, yung opisina niyo po, hindi magagamit to... Ano lang yung totoo? Kung, uh, pasado sila. Kanila, ano, bilis, ibilisan po natin ang ating Uh, serbisyo. Now, going back to itong HPEP for 2020, uh, I am bothered by the decrease in the budget of HPEP for 2020 because I have been uh, visiting hospitals around the country. I have seen the need to assist government hospitals and provide them with equipment in, and infrastructure. With the implementation of the universal health care, we need to ensure that our hospitals are properly equipped and we should aim to have more barangay health station and rural health units. What is the reason for the decrease? How much did you request from the, D, uh, from the DBM for the health facilities enhancement program or HPEP for next year? Can you explain to us briefly the screening process for projects under HPEP? Note that from 2014, 15, 16, from 13 billion, 13, 16, 26, and then bumaba sa 17, bumakit sa 18, and then itong sa 19, 15, and then sa 2020, bumaba to 5. Bakit? Uh, last year, the DBM originally submitted 50 billion budget for HPEP 2019. Congress then increased it to 15 point uh, 0.9 billion. The reason why DBM submitted a very low budget for HPEP is DOH low disbursement and utilization rate, meaning most projects are not uh, completed. Did the uh, DOH improve now in terms of disbursement? What is your obligation and disbursement rate for the HPEP budget uh, this year? Uh, may I uh, request uh, Yusek uh, David to uh, please uh, respond to the query? Go ahead, uh, Yusek. Mr. Chair, Your Honors, uh, may I just give a status report of the 2019 HREP in the amount of uh, 15.8 for infrastructure of 6.8 billion. we have 11% awarded still with zero disbursement as of this date, 18% procurement and 30% under pre-procurement. For the equipment in the amount of 6.7, the awarded amount is 10%, uh, for procurement is 23%, and under pre-procurement is 51%. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yung pong uh, tanong ninyo kung bakit uh, naantala ang uh, mga project under the HFAP. Uh, meron pong uh, mga dahilan nito. Unang-una po rito ay yung bid failures, uh, delayed bidding, yung pong uh, issues of uh, land ownership. Minsan, eh, malalaman na lang namin, akala namin, okay na. Tapos, bigla na lang kami mabubulagta dahil yung palang uh, ownership ay uh, malabo. 
So, ang COA, hindi ho papayag na tayo eh, gagastos para sa mga pag-aari na hindi malinaw. So, yung ownership po, isa po yan sa mga madalas uh, nagiging uh, dahilan. Tapos, yung pong uh, poor contractors uh, performance. Hindi naman din po tayo pwede magbayad kung ang kontratista ay uh, masama yung kanyang uh, performance, hindi angkop sa specifications ng uh, plano nung, nung gusali. So, isa po ito sa mga kadahilanan, yung uh, kakulangan din po sa technical human resource at the regional level. Pero itong mga ito pong sinasabi ko na mga dahilan ay amin na pong tinutugunan, ginoong uh, you know, chairman. At uh, of course, yung lack of plantilla position, meron na rin po tayong uh, kalakip na karagdagan plantilla positions. Tapos sa mga ibang lugar, di naman po uh, maiwasan yung peace and order, uh, uh, security issues. Isa po ito sa mga uh, sampo na amin pong kinilalang uh, dahilan sa mabagal o napag-usad po ng ating mga HPEP projects. Pero ganun pa man, bahagi po ito ng mga reforma na atin na pong inilatag para po mas mapabilis ang uh, pagtatapos ng ating mga HPEP projects. Galing po ako dun sa Naga, sa isang hospital doon. Hindi pa rin nagagamit yung building. Tapos na. So, uh, and then, yung sa uh, Boronggan, uh, Samar, nung inikot ko yung hospital, kulang yung mga gamit. Halos uh, yung building nila. Talagang kawawa. Paki-check paki nyo po yung mga different uh, hospitals. Especially yung mga DOH-run hospitals. Uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, bahagi po ng ating reform ang inilatag noong 20 uh, para sa uh, 2019, yung prioritization po ng uh, ating mga HFM projects, yung mga hospital, mga pasilidad pang kalusugan, yung uh, uh, priority ba po natin, 100% completed po yung infra, kulang na lang po ng kasangkapan. So, yun po yung atin na uh, binigyan ng, uh, ng uh, priority uh, under uh, uh, the first one, yung priority 2 naman po, ito po yung mga 90% completed ng infra, 10% na lang po yung kinakailangan pondo para makumpleto. Priority 3 naman, 80%. Priority 4, 70%. So, gumawa na po tayo. Dati wala po tayong ganitong sistema. At para nga tama po kayo, yung mga nakikita ninyong mga nakatenga na mga gusali, ay dapat ito ay mapakanibangan na sa malalong madaling parahon ng ating po mga kababayan, lalo na ang mga mahihirap na uh, sila po ang uh, laging uh, pumupunta sa mga ospital. At uh, maganda po ito dahil uh, sa inyo pong magandang uh, panukala sa Malasakit uh, Center ay talaga po uh, kinakailangan na mabuksan na sa lalong madaling parahon at malagyan na lang po ng sapat na kasangkapan para makapagbigay ng uh, sapat na serbisyo sa ating po mga kababayan, lalo na ang mga mahihirap na ibig tugunan po sa ilalim ng inyong malasakit uh, centers. Salamat rin po yung sa Bucor, yung sa hospital, yung pagtugon ninyo, pagbigay ng mga medisina. So, kesa naman po ma-expire yon bigay na lang natin sa kanila. Pati rin po yung sa HP rin po ito yung dialysis machine para hindi na po kailangan lumabas ng uh, bilanggo yung mga preso. Eh minsan naiintriga kung bakit uh, namamasyal dyan sa Las Piñas yung mga preso. Baka sabihin na naman may pabor-pabor na nakalabas sila. Eh kung pwede naman nating uh, lalo-lalo na po yung mga matatanda at kawawang uh, preso na kailangan po na mag-dialysis, ay eh, pwedeng gawin doon po sa hospital. Eh, tulungan na lang po natin yung uh, hospital dyan sa loob ng uh, Bilibid. Anyway, uh, to Senator, I would like to acknowledge uh, Senator uh, Bong Ribilla. Happy birthday, and uh, you're all, you're all, all, all uh, invited. Live po ito. Just a follow-up question, follow -up question. Uh, Mr. Chair, concerning uh, HPEP. Ang hirap talaga magtanong sa naging kasama mo dati sa kabinete, pero ilangan tanongin ko rin to. Uh, can you confirm this? Me reports na for NCR, regions 1, 2, 5, Bicol, region 8, region 9, Zamboanga Peninsula, region 11, uh, region 13, and probably region 12. Meron pa tayo, nabanggit yung salitang tenga kanina, meron tayo nakatenga na mobile dental vans, ambulances, hemodialysis machines, x-ray machines, endoscopy machines, power generation kits, ECG, anesthesia, 
kaya na din distribute ito kung kung ang naging problema kanina walang walang uh, walang facilities eh, siguro hindi naman dapat siguro i impede itong mga gamit na ito dahil kailangan kailangan gaya ng sinabi ni uh, Senator Bongo yung hemodialysis machine kailangan sa Bucor so is there a, an internal policy once we procure pursuant to RA9184 is there an internal DOH policy deadline on when we will distribute all of this Uh, policy, yes, sir. Meron ho, so, yeah. bakit marami nakaipit pa ho ngayon na pinapabalidate ho na namin, Mr. Senator? Ang dami ho nagre-request ng oh. mga ambulances ng mga local government units. So, siguro kung who is in charge sa distribution nito, pipilahan kayo ng mga LGUs. Ambulances, mobile dental vans. So, how many, again, after, after my questioning, can you provide us a listing of those undistributed equipment, uh, perhaps uh, lying in your warehouses or whatever depot you have, for, para mabalid, hindi naman nag expire siguro ito, pero kailangan siguro magamit din, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, uh, kami po ay sumasang-ayon sa inyo dahil kahit na wala pong expire ito, eh, yung servisyo dapat na kanya po eh, bibigay ay uh, hindi po natutuloy at uh, hindi po tama ito. Pero bibigyan po namin kayo ng listahan. Ngayon ko po lang po narinig na meron pa palang mga ganito mga kasangkapan so, can, can o gamit. So can you we confirm will. this? Can you confirm uh, this? Ito po, we will validate muna with the so permission. So who, who will confirm? Before, before this hearing is over, perhaps uh -huh. we, we, we get a confirmatory, clarificatory explanation coming from your end. I was asked by Senator Go to preside. Momentarily, lumabas lang siya. So... I'll be presiding uh, for a while. And, uh, ah, the Vice Chair. Uh, uh, Senator Revilla will ask a question. Uh, again, can you confirm? Uh, we will give you the list, uh, Mr. Senator. So you're confirming. I if there is a list, you're confirming. Uh, Otherwise, if you're not confirming, there is no list. Can you give me just a few okay, seconds? Sige. We recognize Senator Revilla uh, for some questions. I am told, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, in so far as the ambulances are concerned, there are just remaining six units for distribution. So, these for, are, not, these oh. are not yet allocated, pero yung mga allocated na po. Allocated yung, na. Kasi po yung, uh, yung uh, deed of donation, yung kanilang registration, yung sanggunian uh, panluluwigan uh, resolution that they will accept this, that they will provide a driver, that they will make sure the maintenance and under operating. Uh, What about the other uh -huh. equipment? The hemodialysis machines, x-ray machines? Wala daw po. I am told, uh, Mr. Chairman. Zero? So... Well, anyway, siguro you, you reconcile your records, and then mamaya siguro tanongin ko uli kayo. Or you just furnish this committee a copy of the listing you mentioned a while ago. Senator Revilla is ready for his questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, or Acting Chairman. Um, yesterday, I asked for an update on the implementation of uh, Republic Act 11233, uh, Secretary. Secretary. Uh, ano po ulit ang status nito? Let's just go back there para maano natin, baka you have the complete report na. Kasi as far as I know, 46 million lang po yata ang nakaalat na pondo for, for the 2019 or the 2020. Uh, for 2020, may nakaalat po tayo total of uh, 60 Uh, well, 45 million 625,000 for MOOE and capital outlay of 20 million for 2020 budget, uh, Your Honor. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Senator Tolentino, uh, itong pinag-usapan ni sa Southern Tagalog Regional Hospital. Dito sa Bacoor, yung, yung kumbaga ito yung pinupush natin na talagang kailangan-kailangan ng ating mga kababayan doon. So I think uh, 46 million talagang medyo o 45.625 million, medyo talagang kakapusin po yon. 
At the same time, 100 bed capacity, level 3 hospital. Pagka level 3 hospital po ba, ano po ba ano nito? Paki-explain nga po. Uh, I would like to request uh, Yusek uh, David to please uh, respond to your query, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let's, uh, please, uh, Yusek David. Go ahead, Yusek. Mr. Chair, your honors. So th with Republic Act uh, establishing the Southern Tagalog Regional Hospital as a 100-bed hospital, uh, we we were discussing already with the regional office and also the staff of the Bacoor Hospital at first to find a, uh, to establish a larger area so that we could build a larger hospital. But uh, be that as it may, for this year we are starting on a phase one level of establishing a 50-bed level one hospital. 50-bed? Yes. Yes, so Your Honor. Kailan po natin uh, mapupulfill o matatapos yung 100 bed or make it 200 beds? Uh, o pwede po bang uh, mapa-fast track po natin, Secretary, at uh, madagdagan natin ng uh, pondo para dyan? We, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. So in July 4, we've already finalized the staffing pattern. And uh, this September 2019, we've completed the IRR and the uh, uh, Memorandum of Agreement. And uh, we're expecting to turn over the project completely to the Department of Health through the Calabarzon Center for Health Development on January 15, 2020. But uh, as of now, Paul, we started with the 50 bed, establishing the 50 bed, uh, because we're trying to figure out how to configure it po in the lot available. Hindi lahat available. Yes. Kasi ang batas po ito na pirmahan ng Pangulo noong 2018 pa. So, medyo talagang nadidelay na. At uh, nagahanap na po yung ating mga kababayan doon sa Southern Tagalog ng uh, itong hinahanap doon yung regional hospital natin. No? At uh, paki baka po pwede po mapapast track po natin. At uh, pagtulungan po natin kung ano rin po yung kailangan naman on our part na para mapagtulungan po natin, Secretary. Yeah, we'll do, Mr. Chairman. Yes, at uh, again, uh, regarding po sa HFP, itong uh, HFEP, no? HFEP. HFEP. <laughs> Ayan, meron po tinatawag na, no, itong HFEP, no, for program ng the DOH. Can you briefly share with us what is this program about? Mr. Chair, your honor. Okay, briefly lang naman. Briefly Mr. lang. Chair, your honor. The health facilities. Oh, dalgay lang kalarating ko lang eh. Sorry. The health facilities enhancement program is a program to assist all health facilities in the country, uh, public health facilities, be it a national hospital, a local government unit hospital, uh, an SUC hospital, or military hospital, uh, to upgrade their capacity in terms of infrastructure and equipment. So, tama. So, papasok pa rin yan doon sa, sa Bacoor. At the same time, is this successful so far? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, because uh, we have upgraded already a lot of public hospitals throughout the country. Mm -hmm. May ginagawa po bang uh, assessment ng ating DOH regarding the implementa implementation of this program? Meron po kayong assessment? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we're establishing our database now for all our the health facilities under construction. We're up, uh, defining the systems and standardizing the systems for for procurement, for implementation, both for uh, for all types of health facilities and for all types of equipment. So, computerized na po tayo all over the country na monitor nyo lahat at, at the same time? Uh, we're not yet, we have not yet completed that. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, but we are developing the system already and the database. Okay, meron din tayong tinatawag na Human Resource for Health, HRH, Development Program of DOH. DOH no? Can you briefly tell us what is this program about? Ito naman po. Po yung Human Resource for Health Deployment uh, Program na support ang ibinibigay po ng uh, DOH sa mga local government units na kinakapos po sa kanilang yamang tao 
uh, para makapagbigay po ng mga servisyong pangkalusugan at minabuti naman po ng uh, DOH kinilala po ang uh, mga puwang sa pagbibigay po ng uh, sa pagkakaroon po ng uh, sapat na uh, uh, human resource uh, from doctors, medtechs, nurses, midwives, dentists. So marami po tayo mga uh, professionals no na mga mag uh, bibigay po ng serbisyong pangkalusugan at ang DOH po ay sa kasalukuyan uh, ipinapatupad ang uh, complementation ng ating po mga pamahalaan lokal sa kanila pong kakapusan na uh, ng uh, tao na mga ngalaga sa kalusugan po ng uh, ating po mga mamamayan. When did you start this program, Secretary? Mga 2014, mga ganun huya, mga 2014, uh, your, uh, Mr. Chairman. Kasama po dyan yung Doctors to the Barrios na matagal na po uh, na itatag noong panahon pa no, pa ni uh, dating senador uh, Juan Flavier. Mm. Uh -huh. mm, let's do it. Uh, at the average po, Secretary, magkano po ang budget ng programang ito for the last five years? Ngayon po, 16 billion, tumaas ng tumaas po ito, nang galing po ito sa 2.97 billion in 2014. At uh, ito po ay uh, uh, tumaas dahil nga sa pangailangan ng ating mga uh, sistemang pangkalusugan na kulang sa yaman tao. Ano po ang ginagamit natin sa na HRH to population ratio as of now po? 43.5 uh, human resource for health uh, for every 10,000 population. 40? 43 na katao. 43 na katao. 44.5 na po na dapat magbigay ng uh, servisyong kalusugan kada uh, sampung libo uh, mamamayan. Ano po naging basehan natin dito para yung pong gamit nyo? Uh, ito po ay uh, batay sa WHO uh, at saka SDG, Sustainable Development Goals uh, Benchmarking. Uh, so ito po ang atin na uh, sinusunod. Well, based po dito sa ating record dito, 19 lang po yata ang uh, human resource ninyo, 19 oh, oh, per 10,000. Bakit hindi po nagtatali? Current, current. The current status is uh, correct, which is at 19 uh, human resource for health uh, personnel for every 10,000. But we are targeting 44.5. Oh, you're targeting 44.5. Oh. Uh, uh time frame. Uh, okay. All right. Ito naman po. Uh, it has been five years since the the RH law was held uh, constitutional by the by the Supreme Court. Uh, the law, however, is yet to be fully implemented. The slow implementation is recently highlighted by recent news. No, itong tinatawag na teenage uh, pregnancy in the country is still alarming. Ano po masasabi niya dito, Secretary? Yung pong uh, TRO uh, na ibinaba ng uh, Korte Suprema ay uh, nawala na po yan. Kanya, nag, uh, right. yung pong uh, pag, uh, pamamahagi ng uh, mga na-TRO na mga reproductive health commodities, modern family planning commodities, uh, ito po ay naipamigay na uh, mula noong 2017, 2018. Uh, excuse me. So, tama po, 2018. At uh, ito naman po ay uh, patuloy na ibinibigay sa ating pong mga uh, pabahalaan na lokal sa kanila pong uh, mga family planning. Nagbabarangay, planning. barangay po ba sila dito? Sila, pa ang, paano pong sistema? Na? Meron po sila ganun ginagawa at kasama po ang uh, mga uh, kinatawan ng mga civil society organizations at mga iba pang uh, mga organisasyon. At sa ngayon ho ay asa 57% na po ang atin modern uh, contraceptive uh, prevalence uh, rate uh, sa mga married women. 
Uh, so, malaki po ang uh, pag-unlad ng uh, atin pong uh, pagsasakatuparan ng uh, reproductive health. Uh, At present po, magkano po bang budget nyo dito sa RH law na ito? Dalawa po yan eh. Meron po sa DOH at sa PAPCOM. PAPCOM oh, meron. Yung uh, Commission on Population and Development. At aalamin po namin. Pero yun po ay nalipat na sa National Economic Development Authority or NEDA. Pero dito po sa DOH, magkano po? So, uh, ang, uh, ako po yung sinabihan na uh, 7.5 billion for the entire family uh, health program na bahagi po nito ay itong uh, reproductive health, family planning, uh, uh, child health na andun po sa mandato ng RPRH law. Uh, so, amin po uh, babantayan ang, uh, kung paano po ito na gagamit at kung ano po ang uh, katumbas na magandang epekto ang inidudulot nito para po makamit natin yung tinatawag natin health outcomes, reproductive health outcomes. Again, uh, Senator, okay, Senator thank you, Vigia. Again, Secretary. Again, again, I think that's a misplaced agency. PAPCOM should be under DOH. As I mentioned uh, a few days ago, the National Museum should not be under the Department of Education. So, dapat siguro kayo talaga yan na ano, kayo yung in-charge doon. Uh, pa paano Binay? napunta doon? <laughs> Senator Binay? Ah. Uh, I have a few policy questions. Pabalikan ko lang, um, Senator, yung um, HFEP before we move on to another topic. Because I remember ho, when you were discussing the 2019 budget, isa ho din sa naging dahilan ng DBM kung bakit binawasan yung ponte nyo because low utilization kayo noong 2018 budget. Um, and during that time, hindi pa ho cash-based yung budgeting. And yung budget nyo for 2018, for HFEP, um, you still have till the end of the year to use it. Can we just get an update dun sa 2018 HFEP? Ang 2018 po natin na update, ang uh, total appropriations po was uh, 30 billion, uh, 30.2 billion, thereabouts. Ang allotment, 29.9 billion. Ang naobliga po ay 28.2 uh, billion, thereabouts, for a 94% uh, obligation rate. Ang disbursement rate naman po over obligation ay uh, lumalabas uh, 9.8 uh, billion, uh, katumbas po nito trend ay 35% uh, na disbursement rate. Uh, so may latest sa po, 50.3% kasi ito po nung isang linggo pa. So, ito po ay na bago na, mainit pa. Uh, ito ho ay 50.3% uh, disbursement rate. Bakit medyo mabagal ho yung disbursement natin? Yung aking pong uh, sinabi, yung pong mga construction ay uh, ongoing at dahil po na antala din sa mga uh, uh, bid, bid failure. So, kailangan ulitin po yung proseso. Yung pong ownership ng lote, hindi po naging malinaw. So, yun po ay uh, atin talagang sinisiguro na bago tayo maglabas ng pondo, itong mga requirement na ito ay uh, Pero dapat... Pero, check, 2018 pa ito eh. Di ba dapat... Well, oh, oh. Uh, yung kasama po rito, 7 billion uh, for barangay health stations. Oh, oh. Ito yung nagka-problema uh -huh, noon. Ito yung nagka-problema po doon. So, kasama ah, so, po ito. May carryover pa po ng mga barangay yes, health. Yes, ano yes. Ano na po ba status doon sa mga well, ganitong um, programa? As a siyak na po ito for uh, arbitration. So, sa kasalukuyang uh, uh, ito po ay uh, ni, ni may kaso at uh, nilulutas po. De, pero, Sek, hindi naman part ng 30.2 billion yung ito, di ba? Yung, ano bang, rural health centers ba tawag? Hindi, hindi ho, pero sinasabi lang ho namin na... Uh, de, but, you know, uh -huh. para hindi ho magulo, let's uh -huh. finish first the 30.2 billion uh -huh. na you only have a 50% disbursement. disbursement rate. Eh, and then, magkano pa ho yung 2019 nyo? It's 15 billion. Ay yung progress billing po ang uh, uh, ang nagiging dahilan din sa pagkaantala ng uh, disbursement, mabagal, matubal na disbursement. Yung uh, delayed billing sa sa amin po mga bagong proseso ng uh, bids and awards committee, 
yung bid bulletin kailangan kasama na po rito yung uh, program of uh, billing. Uh, uh, Secretary, aside from the disbursement, yung actual completion rate of the facilities, meron ho kayong ganong percentage? Meron ho kami. Mer so more or natin. less ilang percent na ho tayo for the 30.2 billion worth of HFEP projects? Sa infra po, ang uh, sabi sa akin ay 75.9%, uh, 76% po, ang physical accomplishment. Uh, uh, sa, equipment na, sa equipment naman po ay 81.8%. Uh, okay. Sa 2019 na ba may figures sa kayo? 2018 lang po ito. So 2019 ay... Uh, I mean, understandable kasi na-delay yes, yung, uh, yung budget. Medyo matatagalan ho siguro ang pagkompleto ng mga proyekto. Kasi and by year uh, end ho kaya, hopefully makaka-reach ba kayo ng 90% completion dun sa infra and then sa, sa equipment? Sa 2018 po. Sa 2018 po. O oh, palagay ko naman kasi 81.8% ng uh, kwa natin. Ay, 76% na po physical accomplishment. Eh, meron pa ho tayo mga ilang na uh, buwan, apat na buwan. Eh, pinapahintulutan naman po tayo na ito ay uh, tapusin by end of 2019, December 31, 2019. Sige po. Um, gusto ko lang po siguro yung, Mr. You. Chair, hingi lang ako ng update sa National Nut Nutrition Council. Can we just get an update kung ano na ba yung uh, present situation natin when it comes to malnutrition, stunting, uh, may obesity din, and uh, wastage. Good afternoon, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair and honor, Your Honors. Uh, the National Nutrition Council latest uh, expanded nu National Nutrition Survey report in 2018, which was conducted by the DOST FNRI, revealed that uh, stunting prevalence rate, though it has decreased or reduced from 33.4% to 30.2% in 2018. And um, overweight, um, nag slightly increase po tayo, especially among young adolescents and adults. Increase. Hey, what's that percentage? Um, ito pala. Kita. Okay, so uh, for obes obesity, uh, so ano yun? Okay, um, for obesity, ma'am, the prevalence in percent of overweight among under five-year-old children, uh, we have uh, less than 3.8%, but in ENNS, our target is actually less than 3.8%, but the latest survey conducted revealed a 4%. So, hindi natin naabot yung target for obesity among children under 5. Whereas, for children 6 to 10 years old, uh, yung target natin for reduction in 2018 is less than 8.6%, but unfortunately, meron po tayong 11.7%. So, meaning to say, uh, overweight among children 6 under 5 and 6 to 10 years old are increasing. Uh, for As regards to um, yun, yung stunting kanina ma'am tama yun, we have really a target of 28.2% but our data revealed a 30.3%. So we're, we're, we're actually 1.8% uh, off from our target. Based sa 2018 accomplishment nyo, um, nakasulat doon dito, you have a 90% um, target LGUs implementing quality nutrition programs. So your target was 90%, pero ang actual nyo was only 56%. Uh, this is as regards to the first 1,000 days or the early childhood care and development program we have, ma'am. So, um, parang yeah. mababa ho yung... Um, Okay, um, as regards to the early childhood care and development, yes, very, that's very true, ma'am, uh, because we are conducting um, the early childhood care and development to scale up 
nutrition interventions in the LGUs identified, particularly in uh, 10 provinces. Bakito, what was the cause of... Yeah. Uh, the main cause really is, number one, um, meron po tayong dinadownload na pera sa kanila, ma'am. Uh, it's when we did consultative workshops and meetings with them, they mentioned about the problem on procurement. Ilang LGU su yung... Uh, uh, ten, okay. We have 10 provinces in the phase one and phase two of the ECCDF 1K, Early Childhood Care and Development, first 1,000 days program, as given by uh, DBM in 2018 up to 2019 budget. So uh, based on re report, um, yung disbursements namin for 2018 is at 50.5%, particularly because some of the LGUs have difficulty in liquidating. And the reason behind was really the problem on procurement, especially on food gardens, the tools, and uh, food gardening tools, because we, we uh, give uh, food gardening tools for barangays in the provinces identified. Second is... Hindi kaya mas maigyan na kayo na lang yung mag-procure and then kayo na lang yung mag-distribute dun sa 10 provinces? Yes, that, that is we, what we are planning to do by 2020, ma'am. Definitely. And second of the second of the problem, the, the 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 reasons for low disbursement is the contracts are to be paid in tranches. Meaning to say, as soon as they only liquidate in full, that's the time that we will give the the, the succeeding tranches. So LGs really a hard time because of implementation. Therefore, they cannot liquidate as soon as possible, as targeted. So yeah, can you just submit to the committee the 10 provinces? Yes, ma'am. And then siguro yung, uh, uh, ano ba yan? The accomplishment. The accomplish yung percentage of their accomplishment. Yeah. And then, you have another program, ho. Ito yung uh, uh, target audience with recall of key nutrition messages. Your target was 61%, pero ang actual, ho, is 0%. No data yet. Okay. Actually, ma'am, uh, th this uh, project or activity should be done in 2019. However, uh, we will still pursue with the project. That is why th no, no, it has not been started yet. But we will be starting that in 2019, last quarter of the okay, year. But it was part of your 2018 budget. Yes, ma'am. But the problem is uh, the contractor... Parang may field bidding. Uh, I was informed that there was two failed bidding for the contractor. Magkano ho ba to? One million lang, ma'am. Yes, opo. Uh, pero, uh, pero siyempre ho, nag, napakahalaga nung information dissemination because paano ho malalaman nung mga kababayan natin what is uh, nutritious, lalong-lalo na sa mga magulang kung ano yung mga tamang dapat uh, ipakain sa kanilang mga so, anak. Going naman yung Saka bakit ang liit ng budget? One million? That is, uh, ma'am, uh, the, the two main reasons why uh, there was failed bidding was, number one, the contractor really said that it was below the, uh, the budget cost. So, so that is the reason why uh, in, in back chair said, uh, the back of the NNC mentioned about increasing the budget so that so we can have... So for 2020, magkano ho yung budget niyo for messaging? Now, the total budget messages. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you pung budget nila na one million. Uh, nila lang it's only for the for NNC. Pero pagka isasama po natin yung sa DOH under the family uh, program at saka sa health promotion, malaki laki po ito. Pinapa himay ko lang po kung magkano talaga. Kasama hui yung ano so nutrition dun sa kasama family. Po, kasama po. Ay, baka pwede tanggalin na lang yung budget nila. Idagdag na lang sa inyo. Pero kung one million lang naman yung kanila, so... But oh. apparently, ho, walang takers kasi nga masyadong mababa. Oh. Oh. Uh, yes, ma madam. Um, I, I, I would like to uh, clarify uh, that every day we do conduct uh, advocacy campaigns, especially in the barangay levels. We have barangay nutrition scholars, we have nutrition action officers all over the country to conduct really the nutrition interventions in 
down below. However, we, we do have also Radio Mosa Nutrition, like uh, Wikipedia of ABS-CBN, which that, is, that forms part of our advocacy campaign in all the LGUs nationwide. Now, uh, yeah, Madam, we agree with you. The, the reason, uh, you, your one million budget is only for impact evaluation of all the advocacy campaigns that we are doing. Uh, kaya nga, wala pa, na, hindi pa po nagagawa yun, uh, the reason I cited earlier is nakulangan po yung budget namin for the, for the kaya nag-failed bid siya. Uh, budget ng promotion. Mm. So, in 20... 19, we do have 79 million for promotions, advocacy promotions for nutrition information and education campaign. And that includes TV program, Rajimus and Nutrition, and other advocacy campaigns with the help of the regional media group in the regions and in the provinces po. So, Sir Executive uh, Director De Yang Yang, you can also tap our government uh, stations like PTV. PIA, PTV4, or baka you can coordinate with PCOO para maging part ng uh, advocacy ng PCOO itong uh, uh, nutrition, ano ba yun? nutrition program. Yes, ma'am. Philippine, uh, Philippine Broadcasting System, we are uh, tying up with them. And in fact, uh, by 2020, ma'am, we will be strongly coordinating with also with PCOO. Because uh, that's, of course, the Malacanang's uh, government's uh, uh, communication group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. A follow-up question kay yung tanong ni Senator Binay. I, I fully support the Nutrition Council of the Philippines. <coughs> ang dami ng award ng Tagaytay dyan, Green Banner Award. Nutrition Honor Award, sir. Oo, oh, ang dami na, pero... The highest honor. Yes, uh, take a ka pa. So, uh, ang, ang suggestion ko ngayon siguro is to uh, focus on communities which would really need your assistance. Like, for, for instance, if you speak of uh, Quezon City, mataas yung, mataas yung antas ng nutrition ng kabataan. But if, if focus on communities, Payatas, Cruz Naligas, Batasan Hills, may mga communities na oh, baseko, dagat-dagatan, na dapat siguro doon mag-focus ang Nutrition Council of the Philippines. But I fully support your... Uh, your office, uh, and dami na namin Green Banner Award dyan. Just one policy advice through the Secretary. Pwede ba mag-coordinate kayo sa DILG for purposes of the Seal of Good Local Governance Awards, mas mataas yung antas, yung percentage na kunin sa nutrisyon bago magbigay ng award ng DILG. And that should emanate from you. Ah. Kasi kung maganda yung nutrition program ng isang gobernador, mayor, eh dapat mas mataas yung yung quality ng buhay sa kanila doon, di ba? Yes, sir. Thank so you very much, that, Senator. Can you, can you Actually, touch base with the ILG through the good Secretary Duque? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, for your information, the DILG is part of the National Nutrition Council. Yes. So we will raise this uh, issue with them in recalibrating yes. the weights that you would like given to uh, the nutrition status of an LGU's uh, Aspiring populace. Aspiring for a seal of lo good local governance. As a prerequisite, yes. Yes, hindi yes. na para wala yung nababanggit na obesity, malnutrition, stunting, etc. Can we do that, ma'am? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, uh, um, as early as 2018, when we did, when we presented the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition 2017 to 2022, before the President and the Cabinet, uh, during its meeting in October 4, 2018, mismo si President Rodrigo Duterte nagsasabi sa DILG to help by all means the National Nutrition Council to really implement nutrition programs in the barangay level. Oh. And in, with that, with that, sir, with that mandate of the president, uh, order of the president, I mean, uh, talaga pong uh, nag-work hand together kami with the ILG. And in fact, the ILG and the National Nutrition Council uh, Executive uh, Office, no, um, nag-propose na po kami ng two indicators to be included in the seal of good governance, like degree reduction of stunting as well as amount of investment on nutrition program in the LGUs. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. I have two more questions before I transfer to the COA hearing. Uh, 
relative to my previous question, H HPEP, yung equipment, uh, apparently, again, uh, with due respect to Secretary Duque, meron na lang six vans na hindi na didistribute. But the, the COA report submitted to me was that uh, yung amount ng an, an idle, unutilized equipment is worth 371,879,312. Eh kung six bands na lang ito, kinukompute ko kan, mahina ko sa mat, lumalabas na 62 million ang isang mobile van. Baka meron, baka meron talagang hemodialysis machines na hindi pa nadidistribute na kailangan natin ibigay na mga X-ray machines. Ba marami pa ho, actually, yung mga panahon ni Secretary Ona na dito po ay nagkaroon ng malaking uh, pagbili uh, uh, o procure ng mga equipment. So, papakuha ko po yung mga listahan na ito dahil uh, tama po kayo, asa ko COA report din po yan, na dapat ito ay magkaroon na ng resolution. Dahil hindi naman pwedeng hayaan lang yung mga makinang yan na nakatenga kung saan-saan na hindi nagagamit ng mamamayan. So, ito po ay atin ng uh, pinaimbestigahan. Secretary, kasi kailangan-kailangan ng mga LGUs yan eh. And one final question. One final question relative to mental health. Uh, last, as a policy question again, which will have a policy rationale coming from your end, Mr. Secretary. Again, with due respect, you entered into uh, a bilateral health agreement with Malaysia last uh, July 31, 2019. Ang tanong ko rito, gaano kahalaga ba ho na pumasok tayo sa isang agreement sa isang bansa Uh, hindi, mental health. Uh, other, other issues, other issues. Gaano kahalaga ba ang pagpasok natin sa bilateral agreement sa other countries? Ang tanong ko dito, sub-questions, ilan na po ang ating uh, bilateral agreement sa, ating, sa, iba, sa ibang bansa? Gaano kahalaga, di, gaano kahalaga ito? Magkano ang budget natin to? Kasi kaya po ako nagtatanong, uh, as a policy priority, Nung pumasok po kayo sa bilateral agreement, July 31, 2019, kaba, bago lang, ito po yung kasagsaga naman ng pangangailangan ng DOH personnel sa Batanes. Katatapos lang nung lindol sa Batanes, uh, 5.9 earthquake magnitude sa Itbayat. Tapos, uh, parang ang, nagi, no offense again, ang, ang problema doon, yung mental health, yung recovery ng mga natroma, and here we are entering into a, an agreement with a foreign country, Malaysia, mahalaga po yun. So, sa prioritization natin, ganun kahalaga yung pagpasok natin sa, sa agreement sa ibang bansa para sa iba, ibang diseases, kaysa unahin muna natin yung problema ng ating mga kababayan, lalong-lalo na yung naapektuhan ng lindol. Again, uh, matter of restructuring your priorities. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, maraming salamat po. Yung pong atin bilateral agreement uh, with the government of Malaysia ay patungkol po ito sa mga kinakailangan uh, kalusugan, uh, servisyong pangkalusugan katulad ng immunization ng ating pong mga kapwa Pilipino sa Saba. So, mga Pilipino din po ito na nagkataon lang na asa Saba po sila na pwedeng Oh, na walang binibigay ng tulong ang uh, pamahalaan Malaysia. So tayo po bilang uh, kapwa natin mga Pilipino, mandato po natin na sila ay uh, magkaroon ng uh, sapat. Uh, hindi naman sobra-sobra, yung sapat lang po na population-based uh, healthcare services, one of which is yung pong immunization. Kasi pwede magkaroon ng uh, outbreaks po doon. Eh, lalo po tayo mga problema kasi pagka nagka-outbreak, baka dalhin natin sa mga hospital natin dito. So, yun lang po yun. Uh, Kaya ako po na-segue doon sa matter of timing, doon sa Lindol, sa Batanes, because I've seen this first hand eh. Pagkatapos po nung uh, malakas na bagyo sa, sa Tacloban, yung Yolanda, meron pong magtsahin na pina, pinaharang ko. Sasakay po sila sa refrigerator na nakalutang sa dagat sa Tacloban, papunta raw sila ng Cebu. So, we're now talking of mental health issues here. So, papunta po ako dun sa policy suggestions ko na po pwede ba ho, tuwing merong isang kalamidad, alam naman nating lahat, meron tayong isang uh, anti-depression team, anti-trauma team, na walang gagawin kung hindi puntahan yung evacuation center, magbigay ng, uh, ng advice, uh, harapin po yung mga kahit sa mga nasunugan na pinupuntahan ni Senator Bongo, harapin yung mga 
uh, na ulila, harapin yung mga biktima, para nang sa ganun po, ma maibsan kagad yung kanilang nararamdaman. Yun lang po ang policy suggestion ko, Mr. Secretary. And I'd like to thank you for answering all my questions. And I turn over again the, the floor to our good chairman because I will transfer to the COA hearing. Maraming salamat po. Thank you sa yung Salamat din po, support, Anyway, uh, one question lang po dito sa, sa mga bed capacity. Ito pong uh, Vicente Soto Memorial Host Medical Center sa Cebu uh, that has the largest bed capacity among the DOH hospitals in Region 7 with 1,200 beds. However, the Vicente Soto Medical Center was only allocated an increase of 3.85 in the 2020 budget while other hospitals with lower bed capacities were allocated with high increases in their budget. What formula guided the DOH in arriving at the proposed 2020 budget for the operation of uh, Vicente Soto and other hospitals? Paano nyo po uh, determine yung, uh, yung bakit hindi pantay-pantay yung pag increase nila? Can I ask uh, permission for yes, USEC David to uh, respond? Yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. So the DOHMOO's support for facility operations is based on a uh, formula, and the formula is the standard cost per bed day, which is actually the authorized, bed, authorized bed, capacity. bed capacity times 365 days multiplied by the percentage of the DOH MOOE support that they historically received. And the standard cost per bed day that we have computed from the data submitted by our hospitals is that level one and level two hospitals have 2,500 uh, per patient per day and the level three is 3,000 per patient per day. And uh, For the percentage of DOH MOOE support, for level one, it's 50%. For level two, we only give 30%. And for level three, we only give 20% because we have already worked for the retained income, and it's usually the level three hospitals that have a large income. So, yun po yung formula, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Going to the field health. Siguro bago okay. lumipat ng field health, since we're talking about beds, ilan nga ako ulit yung DOH, 41 ho ba yung DOH hospital? Se 70. Ilan ho dun sa 70 na... 73. Ilan 73. Ho, ilan ho dun sa 73 DOH run hospitals na two in a bed pa? Depende po kasi sa may seasonality po eh. Kung so, example, mabawa. this, itong dengue season, ah, okay, out of the 73 ho, oh. ilan doon yung nagkaroon ng uh, two patients in one bed? Well, meron po ako nakikita dyan nung uh, dumalaw sa mga hospital, mga dalawa hanggang lima sa isang kama mga bata. So, pagka ho talagang uh, may epidemia, talagang uh, ito po ay uh, nangyayari at masakit man sa loob natin, ah, uh, Pero meron din din po tayong limitasyon sa atin na uh, uh, pondo sa budget. Uh, nakita naman po ninyo yung so, atin. Siguro, Secretary Duque, can you just submit to the committee yung mga DOH run hospitals na year-round nagkakaroon talaga ng two-in-one uh, ano bed ratio Tama po na kayo. mga hospitals. So, maybe we can do something namin. about it in the next budget. And then siguro, before tayo mag-move din sa field health, um, I think nagiging problema ho ngayon itong haze uh, dahil ho sa forest fire na nangyayari ho ngayon sa Indonesia. I heard yung Cebu and even I think pagadian ho ata nagkakaroon ng is Meron ho bang programa or naghahanda na ho ba ang DOH uh, in case na talagang lumala pa itong problema ng haze dito sa ating bansa? Pero naman po tayong mga protocol na sinusunod ng ating po mga uh, DOH uh, Centers for Health Development at uh, yan po ay uh, dati nang nakalatag so i-activate na lang po itong mga tulong or ayuda 
na kakailanganin. Pero magkakaroon po muna ng pagsusuri ng sitwasyon kung gaano ba kabigat itong uh, haze na nakarating na din po sa mga ilang probinsya, kagaya po ng uh, Tawi-Tawi, Palawan, at uh, Cebu, Pagadian. So, and, and oh. Do we have enough ano ba, gas, uh, ano yung mask or kasama part of the protocol? Mer meron po tayo, part of the do protocol. We... Katulad din po yan ng uh, atin uh, region 5 uh, sa Bicol nung nagkaroon po ng uh, Mount Mayon uh, uh, eruption. Uh, kasama na po lahat itong mga protocol na ito. And we have sufficient uh, supply of masks. So far, uh, wala naman po kami natatanggap na ulat na may pangailangan sa uh, But, kasama uh, po yan. But medyo nag-ano na tayo, nagsustock na ho ba tayo? In oh, case of... Oh. Naman, meron na ho. May stock prepositioning ng mga gamit, mga gamot, at stockpiling po. Uh, ganun din po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ito na lang, uh, additional. Sa kaikot ko po ng buong bansa sa mga iba't ibang hospital, ang dami talagang uh, mga hospital na nakahilera yung kama sa labas ng koridor, hallway, minsan dalawa o tatlong bata yung nasa labas ng hospital. Hindi uh, ko alam kung meron ba kayong ginagawa dito, Secretary Duque. Kawawang-kawawa talaga yung, uh, especially, uh, sa, most of them yata are uh, DOH-run uh, hospitals. Kindly, Paki-check lang po. Marami, marami ako nakikita. So, dalawa, sa isang kama, na dalawang uh, pasyente po. Kaya minsan nasa labas ng hallway. Naka yes, uh, sa panahon po ng mga epidemic, uh, gaya na nag-missiles epidemic po tayo, ngayon naman ng uh, dengue epidemic, Uh, marami ho talaga nga uh, mga pasyente sa mga ospital, ngunit meron ho tayong tinatawag na surge capacity na yung mga uh, ibang ospital na hindi naman na uh, ganoon karami ang pasyente, sila naman po ay uh, handa na tumugon doon sa mga uh, spillover ng mga ibang ospital. At uh, sa dengue po, yung ginawa po namin sa uh, Region 6 ay nagpa- Uh, nagtatagpo tayo ng mga tinatawag na mga hydration stations sa mga rural health units para na sa ganun, hindi ho yung mga dengue patients na hindi naman po ganun kalala ang kanilang uh, manifestation ay hindi na po kailangan ma-hospital doon na lamang po natutugon ng kaagad sa mas mababa uh, or uh, basic uh, uh, provider facilities. So, maganda po ang ating tinutugunan sa ilalim ng Universal Health Care Law na ang ama po ay walang iba kung hindi si Pangulong Duterte na uh, mapaunlad ang kapasidad o kakayahan, mapaunlad ang kakayahan ng mga iba't ibang levels ng ating mga health care provider facilities. Kasi ano nangyayari po sa atin, ginoong chairman, ay kahit na hindi naman kabigatan ng sakit, takbuhan na kagad sa ospital. Dalawa po epekto nito eh. Uh, Unang-una, yung mga nangangailangan ng ospital, eh, sila na-displace kasi yung mga nauna na hindi naman talaga kailangan ay sila ang nabibigyan ng uh, kaagaran na uh, uh, tugon. Eh, pero sa universal healthcare law, ito po ay atin ang maisasaayos ma 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 na yung health station pa lang dapat fully capacitated, meron na siyang gamot na yan. Tapos yung mga rural health units natin, meron na po mga... Uh, Uh, capacity for uh, basic laboratory diagnostics, ang ating po mga community and district hospitals, ang ating po mga provincial hospitals, ang ating po national DOH retained hospitals, at saka mga specialty medical centers. Eh, magkakaroon po ng continuous point of contact sa baba, tapos continuing coordinated comprehensive care from the lowest facility, foundational facility, which is the uh, mga health stations, ano po, hanggang sa taas na po yan. Para masala natin, hindi ho lahat gusto, ospital lang uh, puntahan. So pati ho yung kultura at yung health-seeking behavior ay sana ito po ay uh, magbago sa ilalim ng uh, atin po universal health care law. Thank you. Going uh, to Pure Health, uh, General Morales, you have a proposed uh, 2020 budget of 67.35 billion in the NEP. Is this enough for the implementation of, of the universal health care next year? Given the cut in your proposed budget, will there be services under the UAC 
law which will not be implemented in 2020. For 2020, given this proposed budget, what is your projection? Will Will Health have a net income or loss? And uh, how much is your re reserve fund? Uh, thank you, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, the uh, short answer, Your Honor, is no. With 67 billion, we will not be able to execute the full uh, intent of the universal health care law because we proposed initially to DBM a budget of 153 billion. This would be enough to cover the entire population under the universal health care. With 67 billion, we can only provide uh, coverage for uh, 30.6 million members, including uh, to add the 2.5 dependents per member, that would be 76.5 million. So the answer, uh, Your Honor, is that we cannot fulfill the full intent of the universal health care given this budget of 67 billion. Okay, go ahead. Diba yung need nyo 167? Dapat to may mapupunta sa inyong pera from PAGCOR, from PCSO. Kasama na ho dito, ma'am. Kasama na? Yes, ma'am. Magkano ho yung share ng PAGCOR? So, uh, a PAGCOR is supposed to provide about 15 billion, PCSO about uh, 1.5 billion, and then from the syntax about... Uh, ano ho yung 1.5? Uh, galing ho sa PCSO. PCSO, 15 billion PAGCOR, tapos Syntax. S Syntax, we're supposed to receive 88 uh, billion from the Syntax. 88. So, bakit naging 67 lang ho? Correction po. Yung 67 billion po na binibigay ng DBM, wala hong breakdown sa source of funds. That's the total that we will be given. Pero binigay sa inyo last year? I mean, for 2019? The same po, the same level. Uh, uh, so status quo ho kami ng 2018. Yeah, parang may mali ho din sa computation because dapat tataas yung budget. Yes, ma'am. Because idadagdag natin yung PAGCOR share, dadagdag natin yung PCSO share, and then the additional revenue from syntax. Yes, ma'am. That is what we understood. But we were pegged at 67 billion, so this is the sh we have a shortfall of about 85 billion. Da. So, kung tutu siya, no, parang hindi ho ata makatotohanan na sinasabi nila na may PAGCOR PCSO share. Uh, Chair, ma uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Senator, no, kami po ay uh, pumunta kasama si USEC uh, Tong An, Roger, with uh, then OIC. Uh, DBM uh, Abuel, Janet Abuel. Tinanong ko rin po yan eh, kasi sabi ko malinaw sa batas ang mga panggagalingan ng pondo. Yeah. At ito, naka-enumerate yan sa batas, dagdag niya po yan from PAGCOR PCSO <coughs> and additional increase from the excise uh, tax collection. At ang uh, parang ang, uh, akin pong recollection na sagot niya eh, hindi na, kasama na lahat yan yan. Para nilagay nila sa isang common fund, tapos tsaka nila nireprogram kung saan-saan. So sabi ko, paano nangyari yun? Eh yung uh, batas malinaw na itong mga manggagaling sa PAGCOR PCSO ay dagdag talaga ito for benefit enhancement. Yan po nakalagay sa batas eh. At sa At kanila ang posisyon ba dapat nila, ang proseso is bibigyan kayo ng DBM ng budget, let's say 65, 67 billion, and then si PAGCOR will directly remit to PhilHealth their share, katulad ng PCSO, direct, direct na yung remittance sila. Hindi ho ba naging ganun yung proseso? Kasi bakit dadaan pa ho sa DBM and then si DBM pa yung magbibigay sa PhilHealth? Di ba there's a computation? Kung may ilang, DBM may, may, may percentage yun, di ba? Meron daw po DBM kinatawan, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, ibig mo sabihin na uh, General Morales, so with the deficit po ng budget para sa UHC, may harapan tayong i-fully implement po sa 2020 yung Universal Health Care Law? Mr. Chair, kasi para nagkakaproblema, parang nagkakaroon ng, ano nga yan eh, problema dun sa computation because part of the Universal Health Care is the, may share dapat si PAGCOR, si PCSO, 
yung 2019 budget ng PhilHealth for uh, this year was 67 billion. So dapat for 2020, mas mataas yung makukuha nila kasi aside from the 67 billion coming from the national government, dapat madadagdagan pa from PCSO, from PAGCOR, and then I think may additional pa from SIN tax collection. Na parang nawawala ho ngayon sa computation ng budget ng PhilHealth itong uh, additional source of funding for universal health care. Tama mo ba yung pagkakaintindi ko? Uh, Mr. Chairman, relatively speaking, nabawasan. That's the effect. Nabawasan. Kasi we were supposed... Hindi nga kayo, supposed to be, hindi oh. pa nga kayo dinagdagan eh. Oh. Status quo lang yung budget niya. But the need is always increasing. Sa, sa DBM po. Uh, good afternoon po, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Does the share of PCSO and PAGCO to the universal health care already part of the proposed 2020 budget of PhilHealth or mag iba po ito? Sir, my apology. Uh, we are not the one handling the PhilHealth, sir. It's a different bureau that handles the PhilHealth. They, they are the, in the best position to respond, sir. Sir, if you would allow us, we will just submit a report re 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 relative to the, re the questions or the query being raised right now. Uh, okay po. Siguro, can you just submit kung ano break? Kung ano yung funding source ng 67 billion? We will, ano, ma'am, we will relay the request now with the Bureau in charge of the Film Health Budget, ma'am. Siguro, Secretary Duke, uh, siguro, uh, President Morales, sa computation niyo ko, Magkano ho ba dapat yung makukuha nyo from PAGCOR, PCSO, and Syntax? From PAGCOR, ho, 15 billion. So, on top, dadagdag ito. Sa six, sa, idadagdag ito dun sa... Syntax. Sa 67 ninyo. So, plus 15 sa, P, sa PCSO, PAGCOR, magkano po? Yes, sir. The uh, 15 billion from PAGCOR and 1.5 from C PCSO should be on top of what we get from the syntax. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Senator, ito po yung Good. breakdown eh. Uh, doon po sa projected sin tax collections in 2020, may 87.8 uh, billion. Sa DOH, OSEC, and PhilHealth natural uh, increase including uh, MPBF allocation for HRH deployment, totaling 21.5 billion. Sa PAGCOR po, 17.5 billion and the Philippine Charity Service Stakes, 2.8 billion. So, yan po yung uh, total na dapat uh, kasama ang DOH, OSEC, and PhilHealth budget baseline na 53.23. Total is 182.92 billion. Kulang pa rin yun, uh, General Morales? Kulang pa rin, no, because we were asking for uh, 153 billion. For feel health, for feel health. For feel health lang po yan. Opo. On top, iba pa yung sa iba't ibang... Iba yung sa DOH. Okay. So... Yeah, we are appealing ho for uh, more support to get the universal health care program on the road. We will ask the... Uh, Gusto ko sanang uh, gusto ko sanang tanungin niya DBM kaya lang wala rito eh. Bakit uh, anong rason kung bakit po uh, 
hindi mo kayang ibigay yung hinihingi ng uh, uh, PhilHealth, yung proposed uh, budget ng uh, PhilHealth. Mr. Chair, baka si Secretary Duque natanong niya kung bakit gano'n lang yung binigay. Tinanong po namin to pero wala ko kami malinaw na kasagutan kasi sabi namin gano'n, hindi naman kami papayag na ganito ito. So, siguro, uh, dahil may bago naman na uh, rin tayong uh, kalihim ng DBM, ako po yung nakikiusap sa mga uh, Mr. Chairman, we appeal to you to uh, join us uh, in uh, uh, taking this issue with the DBM because the universal health care law in the first year of implementation will require, I am told, 50 billion for the national rollout of our primary care benefit packages. So, kung wala po ito, itutuloy pa rin po naman natin kasi marami naman po tayong mga deliverables uh, on the UHC law na next year, gagawin po natin. Katulad ng automatic uh, eligibility ng lahat ng mga Pilipino sa PhilHealth, yan ay they just have to sign up and enrich the database for uh, universality. Number two, yung pong uh, uh, pag-qualify ng mga uh, membership into indirect and direct uh, contributing uh, members. So, marami ho tayo yung pag, uh, uh, pagbuo ng tinatawag natin mga integration sites sa uh, tatlong po tatlong uh, lugar, uh, walo po sa Visayas, sampu sa Mindanao, labing tatlo po sa Luzon, at dalawa naman po para sa atin city-wide uh, uh, health systems integration. So ito naman ho ay tutuloy natin. So hindi naman po tayo maantala kung saan po yung mga pwede na natin na uh, umpisaan. Umpisaan na po natin kaagad. Siguro Mr. Chair, baka pwede upuan na nga lang ho, siguro together with PhilHealth, DBM, PAGCOR, PCSO, para ho malinaw talaga yung kwenta kung magkano ho talaga dapat yung mapupunta sa PhilHealth. Because um, I think pag nakuha ng PhilHealth yung PAGCOR share, PCSO share, kahit kulang, at least nabawasan naman ho yung kulang. Anyway, I will uh, request the DBM to uh, sit down with the uh the Secretary of Health and the uh, Field Health uh, to to discuss uh, the deficit po nung kulang na pondo. Anyway, yun. Just to add, Mr. Chair, kasi parang lumalabas ho, wala ho talagang funding itong universal health care because uh, Field Health just retained its uh, budget. So wala ho talaga tayong ginasas for universal health care. Baka ho iniintay yung IRR. Pero di ba inaprubahan ina ina ito ng 17th Congress? You know? Actually, Mr. Chair, ito ho yung nakakalungkot eh. Tayo ho dito sa Kongreso, pasa tayo ng pasa ng batas. Walang Pero pera. pagdating sa DBM, eh, kadalasan either hindi nila po pondohan or kulang yung pondo na ibibigay nila. Anyway, yun lang uh, problema. Ang pondo ang kulang. Uh... Are there any more uh, questions with uh, no other senators really wishing to ask questions? Before you, before we end the hearing, may request na mo si Senator Bong Revilla. Uh, he wants the DOH to submit the implementation plan for the Southern Tagalog Hospital and the utilization breakdown of 45.6 million. Uh, no. We'll do that, uh, Mr. And Mr. Chairman. Chair, um, before we approve the budget, um, pwede ba conditional approval upon submission of the... Uh, 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 ano yan? Yung mga... Mr. Uh, Chairman? Medicines and uh -huh. then yung... Uh -huh. I uh, would like to... Uh, I would like to propose that on my word of honor, we will uh, submit all those that we have committed without having to uh, approve the budget conditionally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sige na, pabibigyan ko na si Secretary Duke.
with no other senators wishing to ask questions, uh, the budget of the uh, Department of Health and its attached agencies and corporations are hereby approved on the committee level and are deemed submitted to plenary, taking into consideration the discussions uh, today. Uh, thank you, Secretary Duque, General Morales, and the rest of the BOH. This hearing is hereby suspended. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you on behalf of uh, the DOH family and Philia. Thank you.